And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Villagers. And this is a game uh, from Kickstarter. It's a card drafting and tableau building game. And honestly, when I looked at the cards, it gave me a kind of a glory to Rome vibe to it. But it's a game in which you are drafting cards from the middle and then putting them in your village, trying to get points. In this game, it's money. As you place these cards out, they're going to earn you a certain amount of money uh, over two phases of the game. And then the cards themselves might give you special abilities and things like that. Now, the game looked fairly complex. Complex, but I've come to find out it was a pretty simple game, which is kind of a relief and a nice thing to see these days. Uh, and I'm and I'm trying hard to think of a game that's really like Villagers. It feels fairly unique. Let me show you. I'm going over the the rules for more than two players. The rules change slightly for two players, and there's also a solitaire variant, which has some summer and winter and event cards and stuff that are used if you're playing by yourself. Each player is going to start with a village square in front of them. has two sides, regular, and this one basically just tells you the different phases in the game. And you also start with founders. These six cards are always the starting cards. The rest are shuffled in a big deck of cards and placed here. This is considered the road. There's a first market and second market card here. Now, these are reserve cards, so some of these cards are going to be out. Some of them are going to start in players' hands. And you can always tell what the suit of a card is by the back of it, but you're not quite sure what is on the other side of the card. So the game's going to go over until it ends, and which, which happens when this last one is taken, this last pile is taken, and the second market is scored. Players are trying to get the most coins. Whoever has the most coins is the winner of the game. Now what players are doing on a turn is there's two phases to each round. First, there is a drafting phase. So in a drafting phase, starting with the start player and going clockwise, each player will draft two villagers. However, if you have a villager in your village who has this symbol, for each one of those symbols, you will be able to draft an additional villager. So you'll be able to draft a third, or if you have like this one and play a fourth. When you draft them, you just place them in your village square. So let's say I take the Thatcher, I will then replace it with the top card of the leftmost pile. Remembering, of course, that when I draft, that this, when this pile's out, the first market will happen. Also, if you don't like any of these cards, you can take the top one of one of these piles, hoping it's the one that you need. When everyone is done drafting, you can then take turns building. And building, each player can build two people into their village. Although for each one of these symbols that's already in your village, you can build an additional person into your village. But there's some rules when building people into a village. If the person has a banner here, like this solitary banner, or this or banner, you can just put them straight in your village. However, other than that, they need to go on top of something else. So for example, this blacksmith here, he can't go on a table. The blacksmith must go on top of a miner. So you'd put them like this, on top of the miner. The miner can have two different cards put on top of it. So I might be able to put the blacksmith on it, and I might be able to put another card over here that also goes on top of a miner. Uh, each player starts with founders, so I could take this poulterer who goes on top of the founders and put it on top like that. Um, your founders are going to start here on this side where each round, uh, when the scoring comes, they're going to give you two gold. But if you don't get any cards that have this, they flip over and they'll at least let you draft an extra one. That's a rule of the game. However, once you start covering cards up, only the top symbols matter. However, putting the poulterer on top of the founders gives you that plus three gold during scoring phases, which is pretty good. Now, there's also things that will that need to be unlocked when they're played. So let's take a look at some of the cards in the game. So for example, if I want to play um, this weaver here, the weaver can only be unlocked if there's a carpenter in play. So if the carpenter is in play, which is this card here, then whoever plays the weaver has to pay the person who has the carpenter too. You just put two coins on top of the carpenter card. If the carpenter card is not out, then the weaver will pay those two coins to the bank. If I play the weaver and I own the carpenter, then the bank will put two coins on top of my carpenter. 
So you don't need to have that card in existence. You can always play yours. But remember to play the Weaver. The Weaver needs to go on top of the Spinner here, which goes on top of the Shepherd. So there's going to be a bunch of other things in play too. So the Carpenter, this card shows me that there are eight different cards that unlock through the Carpenter. The Cooper, for example, here uh, unlocks with the Blacksmith, and the Blacksmith unlocks a whole pile of different cards. So most of these cards, when you get them, you're wanting to put them on top because when a first market or second market happens, all the gold coins will give you money in the first market, and in the second market, all your silver coins and gold coins will give you money. So for example, this gives you three gold for every two ore symbols you have. If, the t if, if you've earned money from unlocking stuff, like for example, if the Cooper has $4 on it from unlocking things, you'll also get that amount in the first and second market. So the more cards you unlock, the bigger your income is going to be. And you can see that several of these cards will give you a lot of income when they're on top of other cards. That's pretty much the whole game. I should mention that there are miners, hayers, and lumberjacks over here. And these cards are the basic ones for the hay, wood, and ore suits. And if you want to put one of those in play, you can do so. It doesn't cost you a build action. You simply discard a card from your hand on top of one of the piles and just take it and put it in front of you. So you can always get miners, hares, and lumberjacks. But if you're looking for something that's at the bottom of one of the other ones, maybe the grapers, for example, you need to hope that they're in play. They're not in play. However, there's also cards that are special cards, like the monk here, who is a wild of any type, and there are other special cards that will allow you to do various special abilities over the course of the game. This one unlocks any padlocks, and all villagers played with this tinner for free. Once the second market is revealed, and by the way, there's some other rules each round of the game. Cards here will have a, any cards in a row will have a coin put on them, and if you take them, you get a coin, and if the coin's still there at the beginning of the next round, they'll discard it, and these cards will be replaced from this deck here. But every card will still possibly not make it in the game. But after the second market, whoever has the most money, after all the scoring is said and done, is the winner of the game. So component-wise, the game comes in this box here. I'm not sure how much I like this box. It's, it's decent, it holds the cards well, and it has these this, this is where all the coin counters were held, but once you take them out, you know, then what does go in there? And, I, and, it, and this box itself, it's okay. I'd rather just a square box myself, frankly. It, but on the plus side, it does come with some very nice uh, tiles here to keep track of all. Some of the cards are for four more players, and you can put these, you know, in, in the box here to keep track of it. The coins are okay. Happily, I got this. I don't know if this is Kickstarter exclusive or not, but there's a little box full of wooden coins. Ooh, that are so much nicer. It's hard to use those, those cardboard coins. The art's nice. I like the fact that each of the cards, uh, these basic cards, has two different artwork on both sides of the card. But it's very, very stark, but yet at the same time looks good. Really easy to tell apart what the cards do. You can instantly tell if the card is locked, what card unlocks it, how much money it makes, is it used in a four or more player game. Uh, overall, I thought the component quality of this game, very good. I was very happy with how Villagers played out. It's a very simple game, and there's more Kickstarter cards that I guess can be thrown in, and I mess with them a little bit, but just the base game is really entertaining. Those six initial cards, which ones do you want to get? And they kind of like lead you on a path. You can just go for cards that are worth big points. So when I go through these piles of cards here and I'll say, okay, ooh, you know, this this person here, the, the Fromager, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, that's 15 coins, that's cool, but I need a milkmaid and a grazier and a hayer before I can do that. Well, the hayer is easy to get, and then building on top of that, so then you're looking for specific cards. Now this can lead to some people being annoyed because these grapers, you need them to get out the vineyards and some of the other people in the game and so to build upon those suits you're going to need to find those other cards and they may not be in that particular game so you're gambling a little bit and I don't mind that I like that that gambling aspects there but some people want you know everything to be set in stone and know where all the cards are some of the players I play with mentioned that that didn't bother me I like the clean look of the game, and I like how simple it is. At first, I thought these cards that give you more drafts and more buildings, I felt like you have to do those. In fact, the building one especially, because it feels like if you're not, you know, if every card you get out on the table is going to get you points, and that's true. But the cards that give you more building and more things might not help you out so much. In fact, the cards that unlock other cards, those could be really great, but then I'm sitting there going, I don't feel like playing this card because I know I'm going to give you two more coins. And that really irritates me. I don't want to give you any money at all, if possible, because 
That's the points of the game. And so that back and forth, there's no take that. There's one card that lets you take a card from another player and replace it with this card, but it's a card that's already underneath the other card, so it doesn't affect them, and that's kind of an interesting interaction. Uh, other than that, the only real interaction is the, the locking mechanism where you pay other players money, and that's like their good fortune. I'm picking the blacksmith because I know people are going to want to use him. They're going to want to give me money over the course of the, not going to want to give me money, but they're going to want to use cards that get him. Or maybe I'll just take the card that gives me straight up money. Or these other cards, there's a lot of solitaire cards at the end of the game that you might play that build on. They get points from these icons. This is not this great in-depth game. I do not think people are going to write long strategy guides for villagers. And that's fine. It's a straightforward, simple game, easy to play, easy to teach. The most complex part of the game is remembering what cards come down from the top and how the reserve pile is different than the cards in the row. That's a little clunkier maybe than I would like, but the rest of it flows pretty smoothly, and I like it. That's Villagers. Dice Tower Judgment approved.